Oh, hi. I'm Charlie Reed from hit segment Cold Open. Come with me. This week, the Cold Open has run out of ideas. And you have this very special opportunity to, to submit your very own transcript idea. We'll then pick our favorite one, and then you will get to make it. That means you have four days to write, produce, direct, star in, and edit your very own transcript segment. But now you need a crew. We will assign you three random students from NHS who are very busy. Then, once you've poured your heart and soul into the segment, Dr. Jeremy Whalen will grade it, based on his special rubric. It's pretty simple. All you'll need are J-cuts, L-cuts, 30 to 35 sets of B-roll, wide, close, 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 and a blurred background. Okay. Um, then, but you'll also need lower thirds. And, and, the, and the most important part is whether or not Jeremy likes it. And remember, this will affect your GPA. So get thinking. As of Wednesday, the UK has approved the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for mass rollout. This makes the UK the first country to greenlight the vaccine. Britain has already ordered 40 million doses of the vaccine, or enough to inoculate 20 million people. The first doses should arrive in the coming days. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is expected to meet to discuss said vaccines. Tuesday, actor Elliot Page came out as transgender in a Twitter statement. Quote, Hi friends, I wanted to share with you that I am trans. My pronouns are he, they, and my name is Elliot. End quote. Who was formerly known as Ellen and starred in the breakout 2007 film Juno. The 33-year-old Oscar nominee and Umbrella Academy star vowed to continue speaking against anti-trans discrimination, particularly from political leaders. Two days before Thanksgiving, Reverend Todd Weir, co-pastor at First Churches of Northampton, was sitting near the altar of his church, said, quote, As the crunch for beds is on, we're noticing there are more people sleeping around the building. It breaks my heart to see people sleeping outside when we have the room, end quote. First Churches is currently finalizing a lease of space to ServiceNet that would go until May 1st. The Youth Performance Festival is a free opportunity for youth artists to create original performance pieces under the guidance of mentor artists in the fields of music, dance, theater, and video. Did you ever do, did you ever do, did you ever do something you weren't supposed to? to the creative possibilities of a virtual YPF 2021, and we hope you'll join us. Uh, my name is Alex Western. I graduated last year. I go to Skidmore College, and um, this is a cover of Yesterday by the Beatles. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
course of the last decade, the United States and the rest of the world has seen a dramatic increase in the number of people shopping at online realtors. As a result, big corporations like Amazon and Etsy have amassed a huge revenue record in, with e-commerce anticipated to hit $4.2 trillion by the end of 2020. So you may ask, how does this affect Northampton businesses? I think that there's going to be a lot more online sales, and that's totally anecdotal. I don't really know, um, except that that's what word that's what I feel inclined to do. I just don't feel like excited to browse and shop as much as I did before. Um, but the Yule days that we did this year in Northampton, that's like the equivalent of bad days, was a great day of sales for me here in my store. And I think that was pretty true from the businesses that I know um, that they all did pretty well over the span of four days instead of just one day. But that was the idea to kind of spread out the um, concentration of shoppers. And it seems like it worked and it seems like people were shopping. So when you're thinking of someone or thinking of a gift, if like you just think about like, is there anywhere in town that I could get it before going to um, an easier online shopping big box store? I've been working with a handful of other business owners, Grapefruit, Forest Flowers, Pinch. Um, and it was really Pinch who started this kind of dedicated place for people who want to shop online. And it's called shopnoho.com. And there's an Instagram page. And we totally take feedback. If you guys want to like look at it and let us know what you think and get engaged, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for watching. And please consider supporting small businesses this holiday season. Hi, I'm Tony, and welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Every day, the dark cloud over the winter sports season grows as cases of COVID-19 reach record highs. With no official decisions being made yet, members of the sports community are left with the questions, who, when, and how. This is what we know so far. On Friday, November 6, the EAA issued guidance that will allow higher-risk sports like basketball and hockey to play with modifications this winter. Wrestling, however, cannot hold competitions. The MIAA has declared the official start of the winter sports season as January 4th, but Northampton High School sports could start later, depending on the city's health department ruling. On November 14th, the Northampton Health Department issued a mandatory order suspending all sports and recreational activity. The order said that all activities that wish to be exempt from this order must submit their plans for COVID safety to the Northampton Health Department for approval prior to any event. This means that our athletic director and all of our coaches will have to come up with said plans and submit them to the health department before any season can take place. Even though there is hope for a season this winter, the possibility of having fans is practically none. Even parents may not be allowed to attend. Since this is the case, the athletic director intends to live stream the games. Other possible changes include regular temperature checks, constant sanitizing, and in-game rule changes to enforce safe gameplay. We spoke with swim captain and state champion Oliver Shallot about his hopes and ideas for the upcoming season. I think um, the safest thing to do and the smartest thing to do is just when you're out of the water, no matter what, as soon as you get out of the water, you put a mask on. And when you're in the pool, you make sure that you're staying far away from, from everyone else so you're not bunting up on the wall. And as long as people um, are trying, then it really is not too difficult. The lanes themselves are about six feet wide. So in each individual lane, it's not, um, it's not a concern. I know people have been concerned about ventilation issues. I think in general, the air is already like, from the chlorine on normal years, the air is like bad enough that they have to work on ventilation issues. So the filters in the systems are already pretty good. Um, I don't know if they even would need to update anything in order for things to be considered safe. To have people cheer you on, especially like people that don't really know if you're actually doing well or not, just feels <laughs> really good. Like, um, you know, people just being supportive that you're in the water, no matter uh, if you're having a bad day or a good day, that feels really nice. So that might be hard, but it's totally understandable that that won't happen, I'm sure. Honestly, just having your teammates there would be would be enough. It's not you swimming alone. So, Stage is usually at Boston University. It's a nice pool. It's really nice. Yes. It has a lot more lanes. But this year, 
I don't expect any sort of championship yeah, meet. It's possible that they might do something like virtually so they can have everyone just do their own races in their own pools and they just put all the times into one system and see who had the fastest time. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. Tune in next week for a special bowling episode. Hi everyone, my name is Kendall, and on behalf of the 2022 student government, I'd like to welcome you all to participate in our Among Us tournament, which we are holding December 8th and 9th at 8 p.m. both nights. If you're interested in participating, you should fill out a Google Doc, which can be found in our Instagram bio, and also the next Hello Hamp newsletter. If you are in the class of 2022, an email should already have been sent to you, so you can just fill it out from there. There is a cash prize at the end and a candy prize. And there is a $3 fee for participating and all of the information regarding money is in the Google Doc, which you will fill out. I hope to see you all there. Mm-hmm.